Here are several of the questions that you had on the online assignment for 1.2. Uh, these are some of the most common questions that students asked about uh, after doing that assignment. And um, so if you see one of the problems here that you're interested in, you can just fast forward through the video until you get to that problem, or you can watch all of them. It's up to you. Uh, if there's a problem that you had a question on that you don't see here, then just go ahead and um, um, sit in on my office hours and um, we'll have a video chat with an explanation of any problems that you want me to explain. And um, you can also email me. Okay, so this first problem, this is number two, uh, question two from the online assignment. They're asking you to identify the maximum and minimum values. So the high point looks like it's right around here and the low point is right around here. And so um, I'd say the, the high point occurs pretty close to, closer to five than it is to six. So I'm looking at the possible answers. Um, yeah, it looks like five and um, between those two, it would be five equals five because this looks like it's about five, a little bit higher than seven, so maybe 7.2. And so, um, yeah, that matches what they said here. So uh, there's our maximum value. And so we can already tell it's going to be answer choice B. And then just to confirm, the minimum value occurs at uh, pretty close to 16 months. And the Y value at that point is about 1.6. So this would be um, 16, 1.6. And that matches, again, what they said here in the description. And so that would be answer choice B. And um, we can actually try that. And check the answer. And it says that's correct. Okay, the next one is problem number three. This time they're asking for the domain and range using the, um, looks like they have it set up for set notation. And so domain is all the possible X values of the graph. And so it looks like, uh, let's see, it says that this is a graph of a function over an 18 month period. So even though it looks like this graph might continue in both directions, we're, uh, what we see is just from zero to 18. Negative months don't make sense. So I would say it starts at zero and it might go on to infinity, but because they have a less than or equal to sign, it uh, must stop at some specific value. And so from what we see, it stops at 18. So the X values, uh, this graph are from 0 to 18, or in this case, the T values. Um, another way to think of domain is if you take the graph and smash it onto the x-axis. So if I take this and I just collapse it down onto the x-axis, it would be the number line from 0 to 18 that would get shaded in. If I slide that right down here to the x-axis. Okay. Uh, and then um, for the range, it's the y values. So if we take these y values, take this graph, this time we would smash the graph onto the y axis. So for range, it's the y values. So if I smash this graph onto the y axis, we can see we get only y values in between 1 and 7. Those are our y values there from 1 to 7. And so this would be 1 to 7. Okay. And again, we can check that on the actual problem. That was number 3. And so we said 0 to 18 for the domain, the x values, and 1 to seven for the y values. So let's check and see, and they say it's correct. Okay, the next problem is uh, number five. Okay, number five, um, it says as n increases without bound. So what that means is n is going to infinity. So without bound means it's never going to stop. It's just going to keep increasing. So n is going to infinity. So as 
n goes to infinity, what's happening to the y values? So if you look at these, these fractions are getting very, very small. If we look on a calculator at uh, one divided by six, that's a pretty small number, but one divided by 36 is even smaller. And then one divided by 216 is even smaller. And I'll jump to the last one, one divided by 7776 is even smaller yet. These numbers are getting extremely small. They're getting close to zero. And so as n approaches infinity, p of n approaches zero. And again, I'll test that one out on the actual problem number five. And so what we would choose there is p of n approaches zero. Wait, what was the last choice? N approaches, so yeah, p of n, that's like the y value. The y value approaches zero. And we can check that. It says that's correct. So p of n approaches zero. Okay, and then the next one is number seven. And uh, it's asking for the average rate of change. And so we have to calculate the average rate of change at several points here. And so to find the average rate of change from negative two to negative, from negative three to negative two, negative three is here. So that's negative three, zero. And then at negative, oh wait, that's not negative three, that's negative four. So that negative three, one, two, three. No, I think that was right. Negative three, zero. And then negative two is here. Negative two, two. And so to find the average rate of change, we do the difference in the y values. So two minus zero over the difference in the x values, negative two um, minus negative three. And so that is two over one, which is two. So the average rate of change there is two. And then we'll do the same thing for the rest of the points. So from negative two to one, negative two to x equals one, x equals one right here. So that's the point one, uh, negative one, two, three, four. So one, negative four. So the difference in the y values over the difference in the x values. So we pick the point on the right first, negative four minus two over the difference in the x values, one minus negative two. Um, you can also think of that as rise over run. So our rise, it's going down one, two, three, four, five, six. And um, down negative six and over one, two, three. Or if we do it here, we get negative six over three, which is negative two. And so in either case, our slope is negative two. And um, so we'll continue on from um, x equals zero. x equals zero is here, so it looks like zero, negative three, and x equals one would be here at one, negative four. And so the average rate of change, again, we can use a slope triangle if that helps. We're going down one and over one, so that's a slope of negative one. From one to two, two is here at two, zero. So we're going up four and over one, slope is four. From negative one to zero, uh, negative one is here, negative one, zero to zero, negative three. So we're using these two points. So that's down three and over one negative three. From negative one to two, negative one is this point and two is this point. 
from point to point, the slope there is zero. Okay, so let's see how we did. So our answers were two, negative two, negative one, four, negative three, and zero. So let's try those out. So we said two, negative two, four, negative three, Oh, let's see, this one is actually negative one, four, negative three, and zero. Okay, it accepted all of those answers, so we must have done all those correctly. And the last one. Now this one, I am guessing that most people, a lot of people asked about this one just because this program is very picky on graphing problems. So if you're not getting the points lined up in exactly the right place, don't worry about it. Just try it one time, and if you don't get it, then go on to the next problem. You're still gonna get full credit for the assignment. Um, so basically what we need to do here is plot these points and then connect them with lines. So 0, 0, 0, 0.5, 28 would be right about here. And that's where this program's not very forgiving because if you don't place that point in exactly the right place, um, which is hard to do, it's gonna reject your answer. And then we have 148 and 1.560 and 2.64 and 2.560 and 3.48 3.528 and 4, 0. So that's the kind of graph that you're supposed to come up with. Again, if the computer, if you do this and the computer rejects your answer, don't worry about it. Just go on to the next one. So let's see if I can get this and uh, I'll be shocked if it actually gives me credit for doing this correctly. We'll see. Okay, so that's about the best I can do. Um, we'll go ahead and see what it says. Uh, let's see, the golf ball meters a maximum height of 264. 64 feet in two seconds. The golf ball height is increasing on the interval from, it increases from zero up until its high point, so from zero to two. And it decreases on the interval from two to four. It's not saying whether, uh, let's see, that part's good. That part's good. So part one and part two both have check marks next to them, so I guess they're all good. And that's it.